Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. I Arif Bam Said as moderator will guide the presentation which will be delivered by Group C with our topic discussion prosodic and suprasegmental phonology. The members of Group C consists of me Arif Bam Said student ID number J1E021027. Anindya Marsa Puspita Kinaya, student ID number c 1 e 39 and Maisa Putra Prasani, student ID number c 1 e 40 So without any further ado, let's get straight to the point. The first subtopic will be presented by Marcel. So prosody is concerned with elements of speech that are not individual phonetic segments, vowels and consonants. Properties of syllables and large units of speech include the linguistic functions such as intonation, stress, and rhythm. Such elements are known as suprasegmentals. The term suprasegmental has tended to be used predominantly by American writers, and much British work has preferred to use the term prosodic instead. There has never been full agreement about how many suprasegmental features are to be found in speech, but stress, pitch, intonation, tone, and length are suprasegmental features that we will discuss in this discussion. The next subtopic will be presented by Anindya Marsa Puspita Kinaya. Anind, the floor is yours. Okay, stress. Stress is a is force or emphasis used on a sound, syllable, or word when we spoke. There are three things that you need to pronounce stress correctly. First, this. Second, the stress syllable should be a little higher, and the third, the stress syllable should be longer in time. There are two kinds of stress primary and secondary. For, for the example, stress in two syllable words, noun, picture, money, adjective, happy. Most noun and adjectives with two syllable usually have stress on the first syllable. Verb, decide, explain. Most verbs have stress on the syllable. And then stress in a word that contain more than two syllables. In the beginning, for the example, beautiful. In the middle, example, computer. In the end, example, afternoon. Word that end with shin or shin, stress the second to last syllable. Example, ambition, collision. For that end with C, T, B, G, stress the third to last syllable. Example, democracy, geography. And then pitch. Speakers of any language have the ability to control that, control the level of pitch they speak on. This is explained by controlling the tension of the focal folds and the amount of air that pass through the glottis. The combination of tense focal folds on and greater air pressure result in higher voice pitch on vowels and sonorant consonant, while less tense focal folds and lower air pressure result in the voice pitch. So basically, pitch is a relative highness or lowness of a tone perceived by ear. Low, example, how are you? Mid, example, what are you doing? High, example, where are you? And then intonation, pitch, move, pitch movement in spoken utterance that is not related to differences in word meaning. For example, there is no differences in meaning when English says seven weather is 
it is pronounced with a rising pitch or falling pitch. Intonation means when, why, and how speaker chooses to raise or lower or sustain the pitch of their voice at particular points while speaking. Intonation serves to convey information of a broadly meaningful nature. For example, the falling, the falling pitch we hear at the end of this statement signals that the utterance is complete. For the example, first is falling intonation statement. Open the door, please. WH question. Where are you going? And then rising intonation. Yes, no question. Are you happy today? Take question. I'm not good enough for that. Am I? Third, rising falling action. Example, I love you, but you love her. And four, falling rising action. Example, don't cry. Okay, thank you, Anin, for the explanation. The next subtopic will be presented by Mahesa Putra Prasani. Mahesa, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Arif. So, uh, we are going to talk about tone. Tone is the use of pitch in language to distinguish lexical or grammatical meaning. A language is said to have tone or be a tone language when differences in word meaning are signaled by differences in pitch. Not all of languages has have a tone language. For example, in English, when a speaker says a car with a rising speed, with, with a rising pitch, the word car doesn't mean anything different from the same form pronounced in lower pitch. We can find tone language in Mandarin. For example, ma with falling pitch means cold, and then ma with rising pitch means hum. Some tone languages show tones at only certain pitch levels. Sorts and atap Atapaskan languages spoken in Canada has tones heard at height, mid, and low. There are two kinds of tone in language. The first one is registered tone. Tone shows at only certain pitch levels that signals meaning differences. And then the second one is contour tone, moving pitches that signal meaning differences. And then for the next subtopic is length. In many languages, there are both vowels and consonants whose articulation takes longer relative to that of other vowels and consonants. This phenomenon known as length is widespread in the world's languages. Length is indicated in phonetic transcription by the use of an IPA style colon or simply a colon in North American transcription place after the segment in question. For example, lang in Arabic, the word pronounced amin is different from amin, and also amin is different from amin. And for the last is conclusion. The conclusion is suprasegmental, also called prosodic proper property in phonetic. It's a speech feature consists of stress, tone, pitch, intonation, and length. The function of it is to speech meaningfully and active, effective. Okay, thank you, Maisa, for the explanation. The presentation uh -huh. session has been completed. Thanks to the presenters for delivering the material. I, as moderator, apologies if there are any shortcomings. That's all, and thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.